Welcome to Lose Yourself with Dr. Mike Cunningham, Bible teacher in Vineyard, Utah. When we lose ourselves in worldly distractions, we lose our value, our purpose, and our passion in exchange for temporal experiences. But Jesus says that whoever would lose their life for His sake will find it. Let's learn what it means to lose yourself with Dr. Mike. Welcome to Lose Yourself. I'm Dr. Mike Cunningham, and I'm so glad you could join me for today's program. Last week, we concluded a two-week series saying goodbye to 2023 and looking forward to 2024 with hope. Today, we'll build upon this topic by encouraging listeners to be a light in the world this year. Lose Yourself is a call to discipleship. And while we can often be seen as deeply personal and introspective, it also moves us to share our hope with others. As a Reserve Army chaplain, I've already seen hurt and hopelessness this year. People all around us need hope. I've been asked a lot about this type of ministry, and I'll briefly encourage listeners who may sense a calling to chaplaincy to get involved in either a professional or volunteer level. What is a chaplain? By definition, it's someone endorsed by a governing body who performs pastoral functions outside the church. Chaplains play a crucial role in ministry in various settings such as hospitals, prisons, military units, and universities. And here's a few reasons why chaplains are considered essential in ministry. We provide spiritual support. We offer spiritual care to individuals who are going through difficult times or facing significant challenges. We provide counseling, prayer, and encouragement to help people find comfort and meaning in their circumstances. We also meet the diverse religious needs of those around us. We're often trained to work with people from different backgrounds and beliefs, and we're equipped to offer guidance and support to individuals no matter what their circumstances. We also build community and foster connections. We act as a bridge between individuals and their communities. We facilitate religious services, organize support groups, and foster relationships. We create spaces where individuals can feel a sense of belonging and a connection to a local faith community. We also provide guidance during times of crisis. In situations of emergency or intense emotional distress, chaplains often are called upon to provide spiritual comfort and guidance. Uh, It might be with trauma victims or helping families cope with loss. We're often brought in with public emergencies and other situations, and we're a vital source of strength and compassion. Chaplains also provide a biblical worldview and support people in ethical decision-making. Life is difficult, and there's a lot of people struggling right now just knowing what to do in this life with so many costly decisions. We help people navigate difficult moral choices and offer spiritual perspectives on ethical dilemmas. This presence in people's lives help people make better decisions that align with biblical values and beliefs. So overall, we offer a unique blend of spiritual, emotional, and pastoral care to individuals. It's a ministry of presence, friends, that the best ability sometimes is just availability. And that's why I feel like this is relevant to our conversation today, because in some cases, Christians function as chaplains in their communities and with their families. And it helps provide a gospel presence in the hard-to-reach parts of society. So this experience has informed today's message because it's a challenge to let our light shine in our spheres of influence. And I want you to function that same way in your family and community. Today, I want to reflect on a powerful metaphor that Jesus used to describe his followers. In Matthew 5.14, he says, You are the light of the world. These words carry great significance and they challenge us to a higher calling in our Christian walk. So let's dive into the scriptures and understand what it means to be the light of the world. Again, Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This iconic passage is so important in our daily lives, and I understand it is also a high standard that is difficult to live up to. Many of us would just rather be anonymous, 
and focus on our individual faith. But friend, as I said earlier, Lose Yourself calls us to look upward to God, to get right with him, to then cleanse us inward and teach us and root us in his word. And then that moves outward into our spheres of influence so that so that our personal transformation that may be unseen to many in our spiritual life starts to take on a tangible evidence when we become kinder, more patient, more hopeful, and more helpful to those around us. So in these verses, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, but his words resonate with us today. You can be a beacon of hope, comfort, and guidance in this multifaceted role. You end up as a spiritual counselor, and a source of comfort during distress. So let's break this apart. There are several aspects to this metaphor that we can take to heart. First is the obvious, that light dispels darkness. In the physical world, light dispels darkness and brings clarity. Similarly, as followers of Christ, we're called to dispel that darkness of sin and bring the light of God's love into the world. In just that same way, We don't need to be intimidated by the darkness. This world can be a dark place. It can be scary. And just the same way as this metaphor talks about light dispelling the darkness, if you've ever been in the dark, it's difficult to navigate. It's scary. One of the first things that children do when they're young is they get a nightlight because they're afraid of the dark. It's rather unnerving and unsettling to not be able to see anything. And so first of all, The light of God's love and his word helps us see things clearly and be able to gravitate towards healthy things and godly things instead of the trappings of this life and this world. And so we're called to be a beacon of hope, radiating God's truth and righteousness in our thoughts and words and actions. Because essentially, friend, all we're doing is we are reflecting God's glory. Just as the moon reflects the sun's light, We're called to reflect God's glory. We've been created in God's image. And by living in the way that glorifies him, we become a reflection of his character. When people see our lives, they should see the goodness, love, and grace of God shining through us. This is not about performance. And this is not something we do under our own strength. This is something that God does in us and people see it in our daily lives. I just mentioned another part of this metaphor is that God's word illuminates our path. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. And so that same metaphor describes what God's word does for us. When we don't know where to go, when we don't know what to do, we are able to see clearly and navigate a confusing world with much more clarity and confidence because it allows us to see the world from an eternal perspective as opposed to the temporal confusing perspective. Because in a world filled with confusion and moral ambiguity, we're called to illuminate the path of others. Our words and actions should bring clarity in the midst of chaos and guide others towards the truth of God's word. By living out our faith with authenticity and integrity and help move others towards righteousness. Another aspect about light that I think is so encouraging is the idea that it brings warmth and comfort. You step out of darkness into the sunlight, just the same way that you can feel that warmth on your skin. The Bible and God's word brings that warmth. It comforts us. It removes the hurt and the brokenness. And through acts of kindness and compassion and forgiveness, we can bring healing and restoration to those who've been wounded. And by extending a helping hand and listening ear, We become conduits of God's love. Light also can be a source of unification. In a world that's divided, we have the opportunity and responsibility to be unifying forces, primarily in our churches and with fellow believers. When we set aside our differences and embrace the common purpose we have in Christ, we become a unified light shining forth as a powerful witness to the world. By embodying the love and unity of Christ, we become agents of reconciliation and peace, Because friends, on our own, we're never going to find this. We're never going to be able to guess or work things out for our own. We're dependent upon God to 
set our paths and guide us and help us make right decisions. Our ultimate goal and the unifying force is Christ, who said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 echoes this sentiment by saying, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Friend, these charges are very important. We need to remember to act the part. First Peter 2, 9 says, But you were a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I leave you with a few quotes today. C.S. Lewis said, Virtue, even attempted virtue, brings light. Indulgence brings fog. And isn't that the truth? We live in a foggy world, and only the light of the gospel can pierce it. G.K. Chesterton suggests the issue is now clear. It is between light and darkness, and everyone must choose his side. Deal Moody says, We are told to let our light shine, and if it does, we won't need to tell anybody it does. Lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. I like this sentiment because we don't have to draw attention to ourselves, and we are not in this alone. We are simply to reflect God's glory, and that's enough. Finally, J.I. Packer says, We are to order our lives by the light of his law not by our guesses about his plan. Isn't it interesting that everyone would rather spend their time guessing about God's will instead of just walking in the light, trusting him, seeking scripture, and letting God lead our path instead of us aimlessly guessing? We make things so much more complicated than they have to be. We effort and we guess and we worry when all we have to do is reflect the love of Christ to those around us. Friend, I hope in your discipleship path and in in this journey that you have the opportunity to let God transform your life. And through receiving his grace, through walking day by day with him, with him transforming your character and transforming your life, others seeing that light reflecting can be incredibly powerful. Just the same way as chaplains move into the hard places, the forgotten parts of society, and people dealing with serious problems and grief. My friend, you can do the same thing to that coworker, to that family member, to that neighbor, to that friend. And I encourage you to embrace that this year. Friend, I hope you'll join me in these coming weeks as we're gonna continue in this hopeful journey into 2024. We're going to touch on issues such as forgiveness, God's presence, resilience, and join me next week as we talk about the important role that prayer plays in keeping our hope and keeping us on the right path. And you're not going to want to miss it. As we look forward to 2024 with hope, I hope that you'll embrace your important role as a light in this world, reflecting the light of Christ and the gospel to those who need it. I thank you for being with me today, and I'll see you on our next episode of Lose Yourself. This has been Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself is a teaching ministry of Bible teacher, Dr. Mike Cunningham. For more information about Mike and his ministry, check out his blog at loseyourself.life. Until next time, make it your ambition to lose yourself to Christ. Lose Yourself is a production of Key Radio.